We're just outside our house today. We thought we'd come out of our house <laughs> and do the reading. So it's Canto to chapter 10, text 43. By the way, it's not our house. It's the Tower of London, for those of you who don't know, but I guess it seems everybody knows. Yeah, I think most people should know, especially because I've tagged it on the thing as well. Oh, yeah, forget that. Yeah, we don't live in the tower. <laughs> <laughs> of course, some people should be in the tower. <laughs> Today's his birthday, by All the right, way, for those. On the mall, the And uh, it's freezing out today, so it's going to be a short reading. All right, then we go back in the, our house, have a cup of tea. All right, text 43, thereafter. The, no, Earl Grey, obviously. Queen's. Come on. Huh? <laughs> thereafter, at the end of the millennium, the Lord himself, in the form of Rudra, the destroyer, will annihilate the complete <coughs> creation as the wind displaces the clouds. Proper. This creation is very appropriately compared to clouds. Clouds are created or situated in the sky, and when they are displaced, they remain in the same sky without manifestation. Similarly, the whole creation is made by the Supreme Personality of God in his form of Brahma. It is maintained by him in the form of Vishnu, and it is destroyed by him in the form of Rudra or Shiva, all in due course. This creation, maintenance and destruction nicely explained in the Bhagavad Gita 18.19-20 as follows Bhuta Grama Sa Eva Yam Bhuta Bhutva Bhutva Paliyate Ratri Agame Vasa Parta Baba Vati Ahagame Parasta Smatu Bhavo Anyot Avyakto Avyaktat Sanatanan Yasa Sarve Subhute Su Nasyat Su Navi Nasyati the nature of the material world is that it's first... Oh, this is your paragraph, if you're ready. Oh, All right. All right. Well, the nature of the material world is that it's first created very nicely, then it develops very nicely and stays for a great number of years, even beyond the calculation of the greatest mathematician. But after that, it is again destroyed during the night of Brahma, without any resistance, and at the end of the night of Brahma, it is again manifested as a creation to follow the same principles of maintenance and destruction. The foolish conditioned soul who has taken this temporary world as a permanent settlement has to learn intellectually why such creation and destruction take place. The fruit of actors in the material world are very enthusiastic in the creation of, of big enterprises, big houses, big empires, big industries and so many big, big things. Out of the energy and ingredients supplied by the material agent of the Supreme Lord. With such resources and at the cost of valuable energy, <laughs> the conditioned soul creates, satisfies his whims, but unwillingly has to depart from all his creations and enter into another phase of life to create again and again. To give hope to such foolish conditioned souls who waste their energy in this temporary material world, the Lord gives information that there is another nature which is eternally existent without being occasionally created or destroyed, and that the conditioned soul can understand what he should do and how his valuable energy may be utilized. Instead of wasting his energy in matter, which is sure to be destroyed in due course, by the supreme will, <coughs> the conditioned soul should utilize his energy in the devotional service of the Lord so that it can be transferred to the other eternal nature where there is no birth, no death, no creation, no destruction, but permanent life instead, full of knowledge and unlimited bliss. The temporary creation is thus exhibited and destroyed just to give information to the conditioned soul who is attached to the temporary things. It is also meant to give him a chance for self-realization and not for sense gratification, which is the prime aim of all fruitive mm. actors. Which is nice point. Nice what? Not all fruitive actors. <laughs> we are all fruitive actors mm. trying to enjoy <coughs> the illusion. So it's nice to know that we can go to a place where there is no birth, death, disease, or old age. 
and that it's good to know that that place exists and that there's a process for getting there not that it's something that's um, <coughs> kind of left hanging of course I guess you could say most religions or spiritual movements offer that ideal and, or ideology or, mm. or sanctuary and, and some sort of process but, uh, in Krishna consciousness definitely we can have really practical experience also here mm. <coughs> Very yeah, nice. text 44. The great transcendentalists thus describe the activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but the pure devotees deserve to see more, glor deserve to see more glorious things in transcendence beyond these features. Purple. The Lord is not only the creator and destroyer of the material manifestations of his different energies, he is more than a simple creator and destroyer, for there is there is his feature of Ananda or his pleasure feature. This pleasure feature of the Lord is understood by the pure devotees only and not by others. Hi Krishna, Gopi Chandra. <laughs> Today's his birthday. Stop, stop. Stop, he's shy. This pleasure feature of the Lord is understood by the pure devotees only and not by others. The impersonalist is satisfied simply by <coughs> understanding the all pervasive influence of the Lord. This is called Brahman realization. Greater than the impersonalist is the mystic who sees the Lord situated in his heart as Paramatma, the partial representation of the Lord. But they are pure devotees who take part in the direct pleasure and under potency of the Lord by factual reciprocation of loving service. The Lord in his abode, called the Vaikuntha planets, which are eternal manifestations, always remains with his associates and enjoys transcendental loving services by his pure devotees in different transcendental humours. The pure devotees of the Lord thus undergo a practice of that devotional service to the Lord during the manifestation of the creation and take full advantage of the manifestation by qualifying themselves to enter into the kingdom of God. The Bhagavad Gita 1855 confirms this. Bhakti amam abhijananti yavan yashchasmi tattvata tatomam tattvato natva visate tadanantaram By development of pure devotional service, one can factually know the Lord as he is and thus be trained in the bona fide service of the Lord and be allowed to enter into direct association of the Lord in so many capacities. The highest glorious association with the Lord is made possible in the planet of Goloka Vrindavan where Lord Krishna enjoys himself with the gopis and his favorite animals, the Surabi cows. A description of this transcendental land of Krishna is given in the Brahma Samhita, which is considered by Lord Chaitanya to be the most authentic literature in this connection. So this is interesting. Um, <coughs> once again, the, the this process to get in, but one has to be um, trained mm. in the bona fide service. So we're, we're here for training, and we need to find a trainer and someone that we are open to be trained by, and uh, like Rupa Goswami describes, then we have to follow in the wake of, of their devotional service, and in that way we make spiritual progress and advancement, mm. learning how to act like a resident of the spiritual world. Not that just we can act like idiots like me our whole life and expect that, you know, just because I chant 16 rounds and follow them regs or, you know, do read or do this, and I'm going to get back in. But we actually have to cultivate the proper conduct and mentality in order to qualify to get back into the spiritual world. So, mm. good Lord. Yeah, good Lord indeed. Mm. 45. There is no direct en engineering by the Lord for the creation and destruction of the material world. What is described in the Vedas about his direct interference is simply to counteract the idea that material creation material nature material nature is a creator <laughs> Popa. the Vedic direction for the creation maintenance and destruction of the material world is this yatava imani bhutani jayanti yena jatani jivanti yat prayanti abhi sam vijanti 
Well, that means everything is created by Brahman. After creation, everything is maintained by Brahman. And after annihilation, everything is conserved in Brahman. Gross materialists, without any knowledge of Brahman, Paramatma or Bhagavan, conclude material nature to be the ultimate cause of the material manifestation. And the modern scientist also shares this view that the material nature is the ultimate cause of all the manifestations of the material world. This view is refuted by all Vedic literature. The Vedanta philosophy maintains that Brahman is the fountainhead of all creation, maintenance and destruction. And Srimad Bhagavatam, the natural commentation of Vedanta philosophy, says, Janmari yashyo yata anvayad ita ratas chatev abhigya swarat, etc. Inert matter is undoubtedly energy with potential to interact, but it has no in initiative of its own. Shrimad Bhagavatam therefore comments on the aphorism Janmad Yasya Yataha by saying Abhigya and Swarat, i.e., the Supreme Brahman is not inert matter, but he is the Supreme Consciousness and is independent. Therefore, Inert matter cannot be the ultimate cause of the creation, maintenance, and destruction of the material world. Superficially, material nature appears to be the cause of creation, maintenance, and destruction, but material nature is set into motion by the creation of the Supreme Conscious Being, the Personality of Godhead. He is the background of all creation, maintenance, and destruction, and this is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 9.10. Mayadyakshena prakriti suyate sacharachalam. He tu na ne na konte ya jaga vipari vartate. The material nature is one of the energies of the Lord, and she can work under the direction of the Lord at the yakshena. When the Lord throws his transcendental glance over the material nature, then only can the material nature act as a father contacts the mother who is then able to conceive a child. Although it appears to be the layman and the mother, although it appears to the layman that the Not mother... Not the layman and the mother. <laughs> <laughs> although it appears to the layman right. that the mother gives birth to the child, the experienced man knows that the father gives birth to the child. <laughs> the mother... The mother, the material nature, therefore produces the moving and standing manifestations of the material world after being contacted by the Supreme Father and not independently. Considering material nature to be the cause of creation, maintenance, etc., is called the logic of nipples on the neck of the goat. <laughs> the Chaitanya Charitamrita by Srila Krishnas Kavaraj Goswami describes this logic as. Ajagala Stana Nyaya, as follows, as explained by His Divine Grace Shri Bhakti Sananta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj. The material nature is the material cause, sorry, the material nature as the material cause is known as Pradhan and is the efficient cause is known as Maya. But since it is inert matter, it is not the remote cause of creation. Kaviraj Goswami states as follows. <coughs> Do you want to read a little bit? All right. Because Karana, Karana Navasai Vishnu is a plenary expansion of Krishna, it is he who electrifies the matter to put it in motion. The example of electrification is quite appropriate. Hmm. A piece of iron is certainly not fire, but when the iron is made red hot, certainly it has the quality of fire for its burning capacity. Matter is compared to a piece of iron and it is electrified or made red hot by the glance or manipulation of the Supreme Consciousness of Vishnu. Only by such electrification is the energy of matter displayed in various actions and reactions. Therefore, the inner matter is neither efficient nor the material cause of the cosmic manifestation. Sri Kapiladev has said the original fire, its flame, its sparks and its smoke are all one. For fire is still fire, yet is different from the flame. Flame is different from sparks and sparks are different from the smoke. In every one of them, namely in the flames, in the sparks and in the smoke, the integrity of fire is present. All of them are differently situated with different positions. 
The cosmic manifestation is compared to the smoke because when smoke passes over the sky, so many forms appear, resembling many known and unknown manifestations. The sparks are compared to living <coughs> entities and the flames are compared to material nature, Pradhan. One must know that each and every one of them is effective simply because of being empowered by the quality of the original fire. Therefore all of them, namely the material nature, the cosmic manifestation and the living entities are but different entities of the Lord fire. Therefore those who accept the material nature as a cosmic manifestation of the original cause, Prakriti, the cause of creation according to Sankhya philosophy, are not correct in their conclusion. Mm. The material nature has no separate existence without the Lord. Therefore, setting aside the Supreme Lord as the cause of all causes is the logic of Ajagala Stana Niyaya, or trying to milk the nipples on the neck of a goat. The nipples on the neck of a goat may seem like sources of milk, but to try to get milk from such nipples will be foolish. Foolish. <laughs> so nice, the sun came out while we were here. I know. Unfortunately, it's still cold. Yes. So I think we should stop there. Yes. Because it is chilly out here this morning. We're going to go back into our home, as you can see it behind us, have a cup of tea. Can you see it? Yeah, we just moved in recently. <laughs> okay, thank you all very much for thank you. joining us for the Sri uh, Bhagavatam reading. Yeah, we're nearly finished now because there's only 51 verses. Well, nearly finished the oh, second, second time, canto. Sorry. <laughs> We've got like 10 more. <laughs> so, um... And just a reminder, if anyone wants a Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita set leading up to Gaur Praneem, then please let us know and we'll be happy to try to sort that out for you. Meanwhile, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.